Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a click style game in Unity and welcome to episode 5. So this time we're going to look at replacing our buttons here with this one with an actual cookie or an image of a cookie and this one with the image of a dollar sign just to give it that little bit of extra oomph to the game and we'll also start looking at some extra functions such as auto create and all that will do is basically just automatically create a cookie perhaps every second, half a second, two seconds, whatever you define it as. So firstly let's bring in some images which would be textures so let's create a new folder down here in the assets and let's call it textures and I'm going to bring in in this folder three images two of a cookie and one of a dollar now uh, I'm not going to put these on the website because I have literally taken these from Google so they may not exactly be uh, distributionable uh, but you can just use Google. I'm only using these for demonstration purposes, but any scripts that we write in this episode, they will be on the website. But as I say, these textures, you can just Google. Now, the great thing about this is because we're in a 2D project file, because we originally did this 2D rather than 3D, when we import these images, even though they are PNG images, they come in as sprite rather than default. So it, Unity is automatically setting them to sprite. Now this makes things a lot easier for us because if we were doing it in a 3D environment we would have to create these textures in Sprite but it's just a case of changing the texture type. Now to get these actually on the buttons themselves I'm going to zoom in on this make cookie and I'm just going to drag and drop source image of this first one over here and you can see what's happening here. Because the normal colour is green it's giving a green tint to the actual image. To get around that we just change it back to white. So obviously it looks like we need to kind of change the size of how this looks to get it looking more square like it is in the image. And yeah, you've probably got it by now. All we need to do is just change the width and height here. So I'm going to change it to, let's have 250 by 250. Maybe a bit big. Let's have uh, 150 by 150. Obviously, depending on how big or how, what you want to develop this for, size is everything. So if you're developing this for Android, for example, then keep in mind the size. Now, the text itself, I'm actually going to change to white rather than black so we can see it a little better. And it's up to you whereabouts you want to have that text. You can have it in the middle, you can have it at the bottom, you could have it whatever color you want. Uh, I'm just going to move it down to about there and shrink it a little. There we go. So if we press play now, we should be able to see our make cookie highlights nicely when we hover over it and it still works as the button should do. So now let's do the same with our sell cookie button. Yep, you guessed it. Drag and drop the image onto the sprite. Let's change the size of it. So let's have that as 150 by 150 again. And let's align it here. Nice. And it's up to us what we want to do. You can change the color all here. We can have it its original yellow color if we have it white or we can have it green. It's entirely up to you what you want to do with it. But playing around with these colors here gives you the option to do what you want with it. So I'm going to have it as a, a green color. Uh, let's change the text on it as well to uh, white again. So again, it's just playing around with the buttons and what we're doing here. And let's shrink the size to bring it down to about there. And let's see how that looks. Add a loop. So make cookie, sell cookie. Right. So what I'd like, the reason, well, I'll go why I've imported two cookie images. What I wanted to kind of originally do is maybe generate uh, a different cookie each time we press play. So it would kind of randomly generate. Uh, if we've got time at the end, we'll do that. If not, we'll do it in the next episode. So let's get to some scripting where we're going to automatically create some uh, cookies. Now originally I'm going to start this off just by having a button that we click and it will automatically generate but obviously we're going to develop uh, a case where we can only buy this feature if we have enough cash. So for now I'm just going to have game object, UI and a button and this button is what we're going to press to start this script going. Now in the scripts folder if we remember we have global cache and global cookies. Now if we go into global cookies in Visual Studio, we have to remember a couple of variables that we set a couple of episodes ago, 
which were the static variables. Now this one in particular, the cookie count, is what we're going to deal with when we create the cookie automatically. So let's right click, create C sharp script, and let's have auto cookie. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. And it's not opened up, has it? Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of wing it as we go along because we know what we need to do. We need we know how we're going to do it, but the process of doing it is not necessarily complicated, but it can be a bit daunting at first because it's a process of going back and forth. So firstly, what we need to do is have a bool which is telling us true or false. And this is going to say, are we creating a cookie? Yes or no? If we are, then don't do anything. If we're not, then redo everything. So public bool creating cookie. And by default, we're going to put that as false. Now, we're also going to have a static variable in here because I'm going to kind of future proof what we're doing here. Because although we're going to make one cookie at a time to start off with, we're going to make that a static variable. So as in future, we can buy another level of something and that turns into two. And so obviously we need to reference that in a different script later on in development. So we're future proofing by making it static. So public static and cookie increase. Uh, that should be public static int cookie increase. And then we'll do the internal version of that. As you guys know, I like to see everything in the inspect panel here. And because it's static, we don't get to see it. So public int internal increase semicolon. Uh, we don't need start. We can get rid of that. Uh, we do need void update. So we're going to do a little something in this method, just a quick if statement um, to basically say, are we creating a cookie? Uh, first of all, though, I think we need to make internal increase equals, um, uh, what is it? Cookie increase. Cookie increase, semicolon. Uh, by default, I think we'll make this one equals to one up here in our variable declaration. So now we need to go if and in brackets creating cookie equals false. That's double equals. Uh, open curly bracket. And what we need to do is then set it to true. So creating cookie equals true, which means we are creating a cookie. So we can't run this if statement again until we set it back to false, which we're going to do in a minute. So what we need to do is start a coroutine because we're going to use an I enumerator for this because we need to use a yield function. Obviously, we can't do that in a void method. It needs to be an I enumerator. And we're going to call it create the cookie. Open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. So now what we need to do is quite literally create this. So if we go down here after our void update, we go I enumerator create the cookie. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we're going to do is literally create that cookie and add it to the global cookies. So here we've got global cookies dot cookie count plus equals one global cookies dot cookie count plus equals and because we're doing do one it always needs to be this variable and because we're making this variable equal here well uh, in fact I'll make this one equals one I've realized done that the wrong way around so the main one uh, is going to be equal to one when we start off. So obviously internal increase and these two are now going to be the same. That was my mistake first. I made the internal one one when I should have made the static one one. So this will be internal increase semicolon. 
and then yield wait for seconds and we're going to wait for one second at a time just for now it should be yield return new wait for seconds uh, we may choose to increase this at a later date but i think that's a lot further on in development than the actual cookie increase so for now i'm just going to keep it as one we can change it at a later date so after one second what we need to do is set our creating cookie bool back to false creating cookie equals false semicolon and save now because this is going to be attached to a button straight away um we haven't really got this kind of set up for a button as you would expect so firstly what we'll do is we'll make sure the script works just by adding it to a game object so game object and we'll use this script straight onto here just so as it starts rather than pressing the button so auto cookie straight onto there we don't need to set any variables because they will set themselves and let's press play and we can see we're automatically creating and whether we click this or not it will still add the actual cookies that we're creating so when we come to sell them no problem we can actually sell the ones that we have automatically created you can see yep not enough cookies to sell but we're still kind of adding every second so now let's get this working with the button because this button is eventually going to become a purchase button where we can purchase whatever we need to do so if we um, initially set this to uh, inactive, this game object here, in fact, let's right click, uh, rename, and let's call this auto create cookie, and I'm going to disable it. And within, uh, in fact, we'll create a new script. We, we may as well. At this level of development, having too many scripts isn't really an issue because we're not going to have more than about 15 scripts in total throughout the entire development of this game. So having one extra little one, which you can expand on later, is not a problem. So we're going to call this purchase log. So every time we want to purchase something, we're going to use this script to create that purchase. And let's get rid of everything here. And let's create a variable, which is going to be a game object. So public game object. And we'll have auto cookie, semicolon. And because this is going to be a button, the method has to be public void start auto cookie. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And down here, auto cookie dot set active true semicolon and save that script now obviously we're going to work on this script at a later date as well because it's going to become vital to when we want to buy upgrades for everything we're going to have so whether it's creating cookies selling cookies all different kinds of things so now let's have this button work correctly and our button object has the couple of things there so we are going to attach this purchase log to the button object so every button we have we're gonna use this object here so button click plus drag and drop button object over here no function purchase log and it is if i can find it start auto cookie there it is uh while we're at it let's quickly rename the text uh just auto cookie and let's press play so obviously that object is disabled so we're not automatically creating cookies but let's say we have enough cash we can buy some cookie making equipment and it's not working because i have not set the variable which is pretty silly of me but there we go let's try that again so there we go auto cookie and off we go creating cookies so next time what we're going to look at is let's look at a script which will allow us to randomly change the image of this cookie whether you use that in your game or not 
it, it, you know, it's up to you. I'm just showing you different options of what you can do. Uh, so we're going to work more with timer scripts and further options to auto create. And I think it's about time we got rid of this uh, blue background and let's have something a little bit different, even possibly customizable. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.